This little guy right here is called an M tester slash LCR meter slash component identifier and this is actually kind of a dream come true for me. This is something that I had always imagined being built and here it is. Dave Jones at the EEV blog did a video on this as I'm sure a lot of other people have but I want to take it from a, a little bit of a different perspective which is vintage electronics and specifically germanium transistors. Now as Dave mentioned in his EEV blog video he talked about how many of these there were on eBay and there sure are a lot so I went to my contact at Banggood and asked if they would sponsor one for review which they graciously did. Now I'll include a link to this one because there are so many different ones on eBay um, you know trying to deal with shipping from China and different feedbacks and all that it's basically eight dollars shipped around eight dollars shipped off Banggood just go with the Banggood one I'll include a link you just go buy it if you like it my main concern with this thing was will it identify the pinout on germanium transistors and the reason for that is I use a lot of Soviet germanium transistors when I repair old radios and I do love to repair early solid state radios and I work on a lot of them and sometimes figuring out the pin out on the germanium transistors from Russia is kinda difficult now germanium transistors have all kinds of weird leakages and that compared to silicon and FETs so will this thing actually identify the pins on a germanium transistor is it just gonna identify it as a couple resistors I don't know I haven't tried it this right here is a little bit of my collection of Russian germanium transistors 1T403V um, and on some of them I, I wrote down what the specs are 200 milliwatt 150 milliamp 80 megahertz 20 volt 1T308A GT320V MP13 these MPs are kinda like multi-purpose they're just kinda general GT308 Here's some little LEDs. We could pop one of those in there and see what it did. But I want to try and put this thing through the grill uh, and test some things that EEV blog and other people haven't. And then what I want to do is use it on this. All right, so the way this thing works is you have basically pin one two, three, and it repeats the same. They're in parallel top and bottom. So it goes one, two, three, and then the rest of them are all tied to pin one. It's one, two, three, one, 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 one. So all of these are the same as the first one over here. So let's just pop one in here. All right, here's an MP13B with a manufacture date of 91 on it. Let's pop that in there. And then it likes it it likes it so pin 2 is base pin 3 is collector pin 1 is emitter and we can tell it's germanium because the forward voltage was 200 millivolts forward voltage is 200 milli millivolts and the gain is 37. Now I don't expect this to be very accurate. What I do expect to be accurate is what's the emitter base and collector on this transistor. Right, this is a 1T403. This is like a 1 amp uh, audio output transistor. And it likes it. PNP Wow, forward voltage 89 millivolts. Gain is 85. It likes it. That's great. Let's try this. This is a K1 
KT361 it looks like. Um, this, I believe this is a silicon Russian transistor. PNP. It's definitely silicon because the forward voltage is 735 millivolts and the gain is, and it tells us pin 1 is base, 3 is emitter, and 2 is collector. So that's going across the front. Alright, here's an LED. I think Dave did one, Dave, Dave did this, but we'll do it anyway. That shows it as a diode, and the forward voltage is 1.89, and the capacitance is 76 puff. All right, I think this is a something 404. This could be NPN. Nope, PNP. 153 millivolt forward voltage. Okay, that one was a uh, GT402 PNP. This is a GT404. So this is probably the complementary NPN. And yes, it is. It's got a much lower forward voltage. This is a standard uh, out of, it looks like... Um, Okay, this right here, this is a pole out of what looks like a Zenith transistor radio. So let's just see, we gotta kind of bend the pins here a little bit, get it in here. Oh, I guess it's good. PNP. This is a 4.7 microfarad, 63 volt electrolytic capacitor. Look at the ESR 2.9 ohms. That's pretty crappy, isn't it? Okay, here's a 47, 25 volt. ESR is 0.76 ohms, 46.10 microfarads. That's probably probably pretty close. But yeah, this one with a ESR of 2. Point something ohms. I don't know. I'm not used to it yet. All right, here's a 100 microfarad. ESR half an ohm. 0.93 microfarads. Okay, here's an old Texas Instruments tantalum. ESR, a quarter of an ohm, 106.1 microfarads. Can you see that there? Quarter of an ohm. That's that's what tantalums are good good for is uh, low ESR. Okay, here's an in inductor. I'm not sure how to read these. Uh, four seven something. But anyway you could see I have it between two and one because of the size of it. So here we go. This reflection is crappy. Twenty two ohms, forty one millihenries, or is that microhenries? MH. I think that's what it says. That's pretty close, too. Let me do that with again with the thing out of the way of the screen. Alright, so in this one it looks like it's not one, two, three, one, 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 one. It looks like the last is the last pin is number three or something screwed up here. Here's some random silicon transistor. Ooh, it doesn't like that. It shows it as a double resistor. 0.96 ohms. It's a shorted transistor. OK, 
Okay, let's try it again. Now this is this is bad. This is a bad transistor. Okay, what I did is I took it out and I turned it around. Nope, that's a bad transistor. Right here's a beautiful red transistor. NPN forward voltage 626 millivolts. Here's a little 2N2222 style transistor. And there it is. Alright, this capacitor says 4,700 picofarad on it. And it gets it. ESR is 17 ohms. Alright, I can't read the value on this. One of those green ones you see in all the vintage Japanese radios. Nineteen nanofarads. I'd have to convert that. I'm not that familiar with nanofarads right now. All right, no clue what this is. Just out of the junk box. That's an NPN transistor. All right, here are some Ohmite little devils. Let's uh, see what we can do to this thing with these. Uh, should we just start with a? Standard 1K, brown, black, red. The leads are so damn heavy it'll probably just destroy. Will it even fit in here? God, I don't want to ruin that socket. Here we go. What? All right, let me move it to the top pins and I'll see. The legs are pretty crusty. 996.7 ohms. All right, this is a set says 700 ohm. It's a wire wound 5 watt. Six hundred and eighty four ohms. It's pretty close. I bet it's off. I wouldn't trust the accuracy worth anything. It's just a kind of a crude reference. All right, let's give it some practical test here. Both said they would vote for the bill next week. Rubio says he just wanted to make sure the bill also increased the per child tax credit. Working families raising children, people making 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars are going to be able to keep more of their money. In a Democratic Weekly Radio address, Northern California Congressman Mike Thompson sharply criticized the bill. This bill was written without the benefit of any hearings, any testimony from expert witnesses, or any input from Democrats. Now, if passed, the measure would represent President Trump's first major legislative victory. Okay, this is the driver right here, and it was... Crap, how was it in there? 933. I'm Jay Farner from Quicken Loans. The rate... It was in there with the red dot up. Okay, so let me try and get it in here. Stand by. All right, so it's identifying it as a PNP 108 millivolt. So it's going collector, base, emitter. So it's a collector base emitter. So the red dot up, it's going collector base emitter. Emitter's on the bottom. Base is pointing to the right. Alright, so this is an MP37B and this is NPN. It shouldn't be NPN. Are you screwing up on me here, dude? Let's hit the go button again and see what happens. NPN, really? Here's another one. It's identifying this one as NPN too. Here on eBay, uh, they're showing the MP37 as an NPN transistor. So it's basically 50 pieces for $7.50. Like I said, they're cheap. You go and you try and buy a NTE, 
germanium transistor you're going to be paying a whole lot more okay here's a uh this is an mp13 it's identifying this as pnp and it's saying one is collector two is base three is emitter so that should just plug right in there let's just do it And out of the soul and and for the money difference which i know is not a big deal but the car's fun to drive i mean it's just it's a neat little suv it, it, it seems wider than not as um mp40 let's see what this does pnp okay one is base two is collector which is on the top on the radio and three is emitter uh, so let's see, this is going base, collector, emitter. So, crap, how did I have it in there? So, base, okay, one is collector, two is base, three is emitter. Okay. So the can is base, is that how that is? Boy, that doesn't lend itself to being low noise, does it? So it would go in there just like that, I think. This is not easy to do with one hand. No, 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 don't blow it up. Information uh, for it, give it to you. Get a good answer. I was just, uh, I couldn't give it to you right off. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, one last question: Is she going to be pulling this trailer just around Texas, or is she going to? Okay. So let me try this. Let me go through and find a PNP silicon in here, and we'll put it in the germanium radio. And it should be all under-biased and distorted, but let's see. All right, here we go. PNP, 630 millivolts. It goes collector, base, emitter uh, from left to right. So let's see. So collector is on top on the radio. So I want to bend this one in the middle forward. Hold on. More often, KNX 1070 News Radio. Victor Jasimi joins me now on the Car Pro Show. He's the general manager at Porsche Downtown LA. Victor, you have got some really big news, and I'm excited about it. Yes, good morning, Jerry. First of all, Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday to you and all your listeners. The Cayenne diesels are now available for sale after it's been sitting at the dealers for. Uh uh, left. We're fortunate enough to have 11 of them. Different colors, different uh, options. and Louder about and more product. robust it's more sounding. Than 50 miles on a full tank of fuel. So these are the last of the Mojitos. Of course, after that, they're not going to make any more kind of diesels. So. All right. Well, I think I've gone on long enough with this. Um, if you're interested in these Russian germanium transistors and using them to substitute for stuff in these vintage Zeniths and other 60s and early 70s radios. I have a video on that. I forget what it's called. I can post a link to it in the description below. I'll, what do we have here? Let's see what's in here. Like something we could stick in there, maybe. What the hell is this little thing right here? I have no idea what that is. Is it a capacitor? Are the leads even going to reach down in here? Doesn't look like it. Hold on. Let's see. It says it's a capacitor. I guess that's probably what it is. 
Uh, how about this right here? It's a little inductor, right? Yep. 10.2 ohm. Let's see what else have we got here. How about this thing? Wonder what it would do with an MOV. Let's see. Three point eight three ohm resistor. It probably is some type of thermistor. Another electrolytic. Point six five ohm ESR at ninety UF. You know, would I recommend this thing? Absolutely. Uh, it's a crude everything meter. Uh, great for beginners. If you have a box of parts you want to go through and identify, absolutely great for that. Accuracy, I would take its accuracy as a suggestion. Uh, it's not going to be real accurate. It's, it's truly amazing what it does for the price. You cannot deny that. And I specifically wanted it for identifying transistors. And I say identifying, I don't mean testing, because what I found is that testing these transistors is pretty much pointless unless they're shorted in the audio output circuit or something. If you get one that's in the RF or the converter stage, you, the best, the only way to really test it is to substitute it. And that's part of the reason why I wanted this. Um, like I said, I do have a video on these Russian transistors. You can pick them up pretty cheap on eBay. Uh, they all sell in lots of you know 50 or 25 it's not like you can buy just one or two which is fine because they don't seem to go bad they don't have the whisker problem anyway for eight dollars shipped i recommend it i highly recommend it i'm going to be using it in some of these old radio videos it's going to make things easier for me you could say well can't you just identify the leads on a transistor with a meter well you can but you can't it's hard to identify the collector and emitter because you're going to basically measure two diodes from base to emitter and base to collector. And it's really difficult to identify which one of the, the two diodes is the collector and the emitter. But this appears to do it. And it also does MOSFETs. I could grab a FAT real quick. Alright, this is an IRF Z, uh, IRF 46Z. There you go. N channel MOSFET. And just to change the topic up a little bit to close the video, this is modern, this is primitive. I found this cleaning out a TV shop, and I was just so impressed with the size of it. And it's pretty much brand new in the box from 1965. Look at this. This is what you call a micro tube tester. And it works perfect.